What do I say about an episode so average? It wasn't particularly good, but it wasn't particularly bad either. An episode bogged down by a tire cliche that should have died after Bridal got spared. Yet there are some decent moments, like Troubleshoes interacting with the CMC, the Rodeo Clown Show, the third act, and Sweet Bell being the voice of reason amongst the girls. How do I talk about an episode that's so been there, done that? You know the most recent episode is a Discord one, right? <laughs> well, fuck brooding, let's review something interesting! Hello, everypony, and welcome back to My Little Pony What Works. Today, we look at the latest episode, Make New Friends But Keep Discord. And joining me is... A changeling who really needs to schedule an appointment with the ophthalmologist. At least he didn't say talk about eye candy. I could literally start nearly anywhere on this episode. The visuals, the show getting more mileage out of Celestia, Maud. Well, let's start from the beginning. The episode starts off with afternoon tea for Discord and Fluttershy. A nice callback to both Three's a Crowd and Twilight's Kingdom, as we get to see the two bonding over Earl Grey. Please don't remind me of Three's a Crowd. One of the few missing things from this episode was missing the spot from the Breezies, where we're introduced to Tree Hugger. It's a fine character, but for a Discord episode, I would have liked the chance to meet her before going in early. Her deadpan reminded me quite a bit of Maud. What do you think of her? Oh goody, just what I wanted in my cartoon show filled with Technicolor ponies. Hippies! Then again, could be worse. Could have had environmental terrorists. Yeah, I'll get to you in a future video. Actually, I wonder if Tree Hugger ever interacted with flaxseed and wheatgrass. Just a thought. Anyways, it turns out Fluttershy has invited Tree Hugger to the Grand Galloping Gala as her plus one, and not Discord. Discord reacts. Poorly to be expected. I hate to sound like a broken record, where anyone at this point can suggest he's reformed. I mean, in DBZ in the USA run, going to another dimension was a G-rated speak for kill. Like, I understand keeping Discord's character true to itself. I'm not even complaining about the direction. I just think it's silly to call him reformed simply because the character now likes friendship. So that's what the Shadow Realm from Yu-Gi-Oh! really looks like. But that's jumping ahead a bit. As for Discord's character, remember what Fluttershy said at the end of Twilight's Kingdom about Discord officially being on the council. Wait a minute, where's my throne? I don't think you're quite there yet. <laughs> yes, well, I suppose not. They are indeed friends, but they're still keeping a close eye on him after the whole Tyrek ordeal. Well, in that case, do you feel he had a point in three as a crowd? About everyone else not really being his friend? The other five were pretty well dialed in for that situation, whereas Fluttershy seemed oblivious. Speaking of that, is that normally in Fluttershy's character to be that oblivious? I think she was able to pick up on Twilight and Castle Sweet Castle when she was trying to hide her problem, whereas Discord was seemingly fairly blunt about it. That's a possibility, but then again, Fluttershy has been oblivious on more than one occasion, even when it doesn't involve Discord. The cutie map earlier this season with how friendly the townsfolk were, and the Breezy's episode, where she didn't notice at first she was being taken advantage of. Here is no exception, as later, she apparently has a hearing impairment that no one knew about. Pardon my French, but weren't there a couple of contrived moments? Yeah, as much as I really like this episode, there were a couple of moments that felt too conscripted. You mean like Mod Pie trolling Discord? Oh hell no, that was absolutely glorious. I'm thinking more along the lines of Discord's jealousy towards Fluttershy's friend to a cartoonish degree. Even for a cartoon. But then again, it didn't really hurt the episode in any way. Hey, if over-the-top writing can do that every time, I have no complaints. Well, MLP borrows a lot of elements from classic Greek mythology, many of those gods were petty and jealous. Childish. I mean, Discord is more or less Loki. You need look no further than a couple of DA artists for that. Not to mention we see Celestia's more immature side to back this up. I guess Celestia has a thing against boredom. And Discord's presence with... The thing we'll talk about later wasn't a complete disaster to the gala. After all, by the end of the episode, everyone seemed to enjoy themselves by night's end. Which reminds me, Celestia should probably send Discord to the Crystal Empire to make things more lively. Oh, I want to double back for this. Big props to the show staff for not pretending like the gala was this super fun house. Alright, y'all. Keep it down. It ain't like it's a life-changing experience. That was a perfect continuity nod. They didn't spend a lot of time on it. But we got to see Rarity blending in briefly, the CMC being excited for an event that they couldn't possibly understand would be boring. Not unlike Pinky's childlike optimism from the Grand Galloping Gala the first time around. The writing staff could have easily gone off the rails at any time, focusing on too much of any of these things, and I'm glad they kept the focus where it needed to be. I agree with you there. Unlike last time at the Gala, the plot isn't spread so thin that they lose focus. Going back to Discord for a brief moment, 
I liked every interaction he had with the main six and Spike. The latter of which I'm clearing the most uncomfortable scene in the entire show. How do I analyze or review that? I went back to look at that again, just to be sure. Yep, that's pretty creepy. I mean, really, Discord's going around tormenting little kids. I think he's become a worse person after switching sides. Hey, you think that's bad? You should have seen how he treats getting the mail late. So long, unnamed mail pony. We hardly knew ye. Oh, please, that's necessary evil. Say, is it just me, or did the writing try and get the audience to identify with Discord? I mean, really, I have to ask. I might possibly identify with the troll archetype too much. Actually, I know people who have acted like that. I mean, not to Discord's extent of banishing someone to the Shadow Realm, but more along the lines of not accepting you could have more than one set of friends to talk about similarities. Myself included. I have my college friends, my hometown friends, and my brony friends, and sometimes I can get a little jealous when I'm not included in something that doesn't really interest me. Say is it just me, but would Maud have been a better fit than, say, Treehugger? I mean, the scene they used her for worked amazingly well. They needed someone reserved to bounce Discord off of. She was established, familiar... Debatable, but I think Fluttershy and Treehugger work better in story. Having Discord get jealous over Pinkie Pie could be seen as coming out of left field. I guess you're right. Even if they establish the bond, by the way, I loved Pinky's Discord scene at the bakery, but there would have been even more fussing about Pinky not picking up on Discord's emotions than say Fluttershy had missing it. So, is there room for the jello? You mean the thing I really don't want to talk about? Oh come on, we're strapped for monsters this season. Plus, this one's a legacy. You want me to talk about the thing that reminds me of the worst parody series of all time? Better not be talking smack about Rainbow Dash Presents. Alright, here are my thoughts on the smooze. I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, the smooze is a cool idea for a creature in My Little Pony. A sentient magic blob that gets bigger and bigger until nothing can stop it is genius. Granted, there were some changes from G1 G4, such as it gets bigger from absorbing shiny things, and the fact that it looks like Discord picked it out of his nose, but within the show's ever-expanding fantasy element, it works. I think sentient is a loose interpretation. It's a walking stomach with a smile. I think it fits closer to a pet than a friend. I appreciated the callback and I understand concerning what it was. It's basically going to be Discord's gummy. So, Bob from Monsters vs. Aliens' distant cousin? I can see the resemblance. While we're still on the smooths, the episode was a reference goldmine. Let's count them all. Number one, Metal Gear Solid. Number two, Dumb and Dumber. Number three, The Smooths. I guess that counts. Number four, Eddie Murphy. Number five, Jerry Seinfeld. Six, Rodney Dangerfield. No respect, even from the voice of reason. Number seven, Gallagher. Number eight, The Shining. Wait, The Shining? Okay, first Harrison Bergeron in 1984, then Game of Thrones, now Stanley Kubrick? What is with this season and the rated arc pop culture? Well, there's the Animaniacs fingerprint sight gag. I don't think so. So that was make new friends but keep Discord. Any final thoughts? Aside from some of Discord's cringe parts, which are kind of necessary, you know the ones, it was perfect. They got a lot of mileage out of Discord this time around, and I'm trying to say something positive and redeemable about the guy. Um, um, um... Well, as for me, this is definitely one of the funniest episodes of the show. While well, maybe not as funny as Mod Pie, the moments that stood out had me laughing on the floor. The visuals are still getting better over time, with Discord's residents apparently being inside Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum, as well as the best facial expression ever. Discord is at his most relatable and continues to get character depth along with a simple but all-around great moral that everyone should learn. While there were some questionable moments in terms of the story, nothing that hindered the plot in a big way. It gets my four-star seal of approval. Oh yeah, and Tasha Levenger really brought our A-game this time. Pinky Apple Pie was my season four favorite. This one's definitely in the running. Hell, it made me forget about Appaloosa's Most Wanted. I did find the moral relatable. M maybe a little too relatable. There's so much to say about this episode. It's a reviewer and an analyst's dream. Well, we can distance Appaloosa's Most Wanted even further away, because next time is The Lost Treasure of Griffinstone. I am excited. Stoked. Keeping your eye out for Gilda. See you next time, kids. Well, thanks for coming by, FNGR. And as always, I'm the Voice of Reason, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>